Will Bama dominate Wisconsin? Is Boston College at Mizzou a tricky game to pick? Can Wake Forest do anything to slow down Ole Miss? It's time to get the SEC squad together. You're talking ball with the SEC squad. From Alabama to Tennessee, from Georgia to Oklahoma, from Auburn to Texas, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming SEC weekend. It's the SEC squad, and we have a seat for you. Hurt feelings and thin skin are prohibited. Squad up. You're part of the SEC squad. Hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome to the SEC squad. Sit back, grab your favorite beverage, and join us as we get you ready for another wild week across the Southeastern Conference. Today's episode presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. All right, quick roll call here as we welcome in our guest. We've got John Miller, host of Locked On Mizzou, Stephen Willis, host of Locked On Ole Miss, Jay Smith, host of Locked On Sooners, and our buddy Chris Marler, host of Locked On Gamecocks. I'm Chris Gordy, host of Locked On SEC. Gentlemen, a smaller group this week. That means more people get to talk, but hopefully we will get uh, – uh, no less vitriol and uh, rude um, comments and hurt feelings. Guys, I want to open up before we get into SEC Week 3 and some of the big matchups this week. Just want to open it up to you guys. Any big surprises so far through two weeks of SEC play so far? Jackson Dart, 87% completion percentage through two games, 30 consecutive completions in SEC record over two games, 24 consecutive completions in one game. Jackson Dart is performing at a level – I think beyond even what the biggest Homer Ole Miss fan could think of, even through two games. And I do not care if Ole Miss has played the weak sisters of the poor. Auburn could not complete 10 consecutive passes against air right now. So don't give me any of that. 30 consecutive passes completed by Jackson Dart. He's absolutely performing. And him and Quinn Ewers is probably the best quarterbacks in the country at the moment. Real, just real quick, piggyback on what Steven said. Like, Outside of me and Jay, everyone else on this show was right last week, so we'll, get, we'll let them have their flowers first, obviously. But what Steven said, Dart, over the last two seasons in 26 starts, has only had five games where he was over 70% completion percentage. Like, that kind of efficiency has been, like, that. what's plagued him, but it hasn't been great over the past couple of years. For him to go out there and, and put up 87.5%, like you said, if it's against air, especially against that track record, it's, it's unbelievably impressive. Yeah, he's out there balling out. Like I, I like I've I, I've been following him since USC. I mean, he, he he was on the list for Oklahoma when we got our new coaching staff. So I've been keeping up with him. And man, he is playing out of his mind. Regardless of who you play, what doing that doing that percentage is still really hard. Like it's a challenge to just do that because you still got to have the perfect type of chemistry and timing when it comes to your wide receivers, and they also got to catch the ball. Yeah, look, shout out to him for actually executing on that. But this sure, isn't this what he's done. I mean, like they start great, puts up great numbers, and then when yeah, the competition yeah. gets tougher, the the numbers start to come back down to earth. No, that's what anybody. This, this is different because, as Chris said, he's only had five games in his entire career of over seventy percent completion. He's always been a fairly low completion percentage passer over his first two years at Ole Miss. Yeah. This year is just completely different. Something has happened, and honestly. He reminds me a lot of 2019 Joe Burrow in the way that football is everything to this guy for this season. And he is living and breathing. And if he he talked about and said football was the most important thing in his life for the next four months, you would believe it. And in that way, him and Burrow have that in common. That wow, is 2019 that. Joe Burrow. That That is quite a statement. I'll, I'll just say yeah. preseason. I was a big ever. fan. Yeah, I was a big fan. Yeah, that was that was quite a leap. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. A really impressive start well, I, by I wasn't Dart, talking without about, a doubt. I, wasn't I know. Talking I'm, I'm just talent. busting your chops. But, but you know, my, my big surprise from the Missouri perspective, just to just to shift just for a second, everybody was talking about the Missouri offense in the, in the offseason. Well, the Missouri defense may well be an elite unit. I know they've played the Little Sisters of the Poor as well. 2-0 start, but two, two shutouts. That hasn't happened in FBS football since 2019. Yeah, that, that's, it's, it's a great really stat, good. but it yeah. really is like, you know, how good are – we don't know how good you are. We thought Auburn was awesome week one, and then they played a cow. They look, they look like crap. So, no offense to Missouri. Missouri's going to get a real test this week. We'll see yes. Ole Miss on the road at Wake Forest. But I'm a little – call me skeptical of Mizzou not allowing a point yet and Jackson Dart looking like the next coming of Joe Burrow. 
Oh, yeah, I think you gotta you gotta see them do that against the next level competitions. As you mentioned, Chris, with, with any quarterback, right? All the highs are great whenever you're playing against, you know, the quote unquote preseason games. But then as you get more and more in there, and there's more tape on you, teams are gonna start scheming and preparing. And so the question is gonna be when that adversity really comes out, how do they perform? Now, granted, I don't think that either one of them is gonna see a massive drop off. I do still see the uh, the the consistency that's going to happen from them both this coming season, right, with Missouri as well as Ole Miss because they're playing at a level that if they did come down would still be even higher than what they most people probably expected anyway. Yeah, and also, Chris, we need to check the efficiency as this goes because with the helmet technology and mm-hmm. having Lane Kiffin's ability to talk into the year and Ole Miss snaps the ball before 15 seconds nearly every play – I think that has a lot to do with this, too. Do you There's guys some truth know? there on how quickly they're snapping the ball, for sure, yeah. with the new rules. That is an do, advantage. Do you guys know the yeah. three best offenses in the SEC right now? South Carolina, <laughs> Kentucky. South Kentucky's Carolina offense is, is the best defense. I'll tell you that. They are. I'll say Ole Miss, well, Texas, yeah, all, and all. Alabama. I'll give you – well, I'll give you Kentucky is dead last in yards yeah. per game, yeah. so they're dead last. But Ole Miss, number one, over mm-hmm. 700 yards of offense – Arkansas and Bobby Petrino, number two, wow. and then Tennessee, number three, with oh, Josh Eiffel. Yeah, I think there's something to the coach being in the headset of the, the quarterbacks. And, I mean, I, no surprise at those top three. I think yeah. I think the other thing that surprised me, too, just kind of going around the rest of the SEC, like, like I know Arkansas is one-on-one, so it's not like a super sexy thing to talk about. But I tell you what, man, they are a uh, just a comedy of errors and, and self-sabotage. Like I, I, I jokingly said on Twitter before my account got suspended again, Gordy, um, that that this is an like like an Antonio Brown level of self sabotage that we saw from Arkansas this weekend. It was unbelievable what they did to themselves. But I tell you what, that offense is going to travel, and as long as they can like figure out ways to not have that many mistakes, like they're going to be dangerous with a lot of teams. Um, the other one I, I think is like listen, South Carolina's offense is very very tough to watch at times. Like it is very like there was a time going into I think uh, after the first touchdown drive against Kentucky. They ran up a stat that they had 27 plays for 52 total yards. So you're talking about for, you know, basically two quarters uh, of football, you had less than two yards per per play. Really, really bad. Now, I, of course, tweeted that out. And then on the next play, there's a 32-yard gain on third down. <laughs> the main takeaway here, though, is the defense outscored Kentucky by itself. And that pass rush for South Carolina, like I fully expected this to be a top five defense in the SEC. Like, like they'd be capable of doing that. The pass rush, I did not see coming because they had, I think, at one point, I think Kentucky had to run the ball 18 straight plays. And they asked Mm -hmm. Stoops about the end of the game. They asked him why. And he said, we couldn't drop back and throw the ball. We had no time to drop back and throw the ball. I guess this is the nice indictment of uh, Brock Vandergriff when you really talk, think about it, right? Like, I I see why Georgia never actually put him on the field as a starter multiple games because, yeah, he looked pretty bad. But I love the the point on the headset technology because – to, to John to John's point there's they're hiking the ball pretty fast and it makes me think about that uh, Super Bowl where the Rams and Patriots played it was like what 13 to three is like one of the worst best defensive uh, battles we've ever seen in Super Bowl history or whatnot and I'm kidding but in that game the Patriots defenders talked about how they were able to beat Sean McVay and Jared Goff and what it was is they figured out who the actual quarterback was it was Sean McVay. He was basically reading the defense, telling Jared Goff where to go. And so once that 15 seconds hit and the headset was turned off, the Patriots changed their entire defense. So then Jared Goff had to figure out what's going on. He's like, I, I don't know what to do. And I'm wondering if that's why a lot of these teams are hiking the ball so fast in fear that these defenses will change right when the 15 second mark hit, because then they're going to force the quarterbacks to truly have to read defenses. It's something to really keep an eye out on. I, I think that, that Auburn might actually have their their uh, their thing go over 15 seconds, but not for help. They're just going to be roasting Peyton Thorne in his ears the whole time, just until he emotionally quits. <laughs> yeah, if you missed the story from earlier this week, Jackson Dart uh, coming out and saying that fans were actually requesting money from him on Venmo, saying, you owe me money, bro. That's, that's how bad <laughs> things are getting. Peyton Thorne, well, they, people were Peyton Venmoing Thorne, Jackson, Jackson Dart money. <laughs> <laughs> two other quick things i wanted to point out to you guys just kind of interesting stats because i was keep diving into the stats around the conference crazy to think as good as texas has been and by the way the best you know resume win so far win on the road at michigan uh texas does not have a top 10 rusher or receiver in the sec currently now maybe that's more an indictment they spread the ball around well 
But even Quinn Ewers is seventh in the SEC in passing yards. It's or, or seventh, uh, yeah, in the conference. So it's not exactly like they're just you know offenses on fire and all this. They put up great numbers. It's been two dominant wins. But uh, one other stat, and I found this odd: Arch Manning has more passing yards this season than Graham Mertz. Just think that's funny. I know Graham Mertz missed the game against Sanford. And then Graham Mertz went from the most accurate quarterback in the conference a year ago. He's now the fourth worst. And I get it. It was the one game to start against Miami. But he is just out of Lenore Sellers, Brock Vandegrift, and Connor Wegman in uh, accuracy this year. So yeah, last guy might have ended his career. Uh, only two weeks in. So there you go. Any, anything else you guys want to add before we get to previewing the games? Is Luther Burden okay, John? Where? What's is he okay? What's happening? I, I think he may have had to run to the bathroom or something. I think he's okay. Yeah, Eli Drinkwitz <laughs> called it in illness. A, so we're we're gonna. He had go a Lamar Jackson. He had a Lamar Jackson situation where he had to. Uh, it <laughs> it's like when, when you were at your friend's sleepover. I gotta go home. I'm sick. I'm and sorry, yes. mom. Yeah, we, we know what right, really exactly. happened there. Yeah. All right. Let's dive deeper into Alabama, Wisconsin, and Boston College in Missouri, the SEC squad. Talking more ball next. What's up, everybody? First, a quick minute here for our friends over at Factor Meals. Look, you can fuel up with Factor's no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? With 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week, you'll always have new flavors to explore. You can crush your wellness goals throughout this fall with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust head to factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 use code locked on college 50 and get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month that's code locked on college 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on college 50 get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month while your subscription is active this episode also presented to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Look, you've heard us talk all about FanDuel. They are still America's number one sports book. And we got a little something different going for you over at FanDuel right now. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. If you're a fantasy football player, you want, you know you want to be checking in on all the games out there. And with a YouTube TV base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season Sunday afternoon out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel anytime. Just visit FanDuel.com, uh, download America's number one sports book, and of course, get in all the action. They got all the SEC games happening this weekend. They got updated Heisman odds. Quinn Ewers now the favorite at plus 450 over there. FanDuel to win the Heisman. If you like Jackson Dart, you can get him at plus 950, a little bit longer odds. It's all there at FanDuel. Again, go check them out. They are FanDuel.com and download America's number one sports book. All right, roll along here. The SEC squad continues. And, guys, we got some big matchups to get into this week. And I want to start with the early one. It is Alabama, 11 a.m. Central, 12 Eastern on Fox. The Crimson Tide, 2-0 and undefeated, number four in the country, going on the road at Wisconsin. And, you know, back years ago, this would have been a, a monster matchup. I know Wisconsin's trying to get back to where they used to be under Luke Fickle. But Bama sitting at about a 16, 15-and-a-half point favorite over at FanDuel. Um, thoughts on this, guys? Alabama looked very average for three quarters last week against South Florida and finally turned it on late. Is Ron Dane the starting running back at Wisconsin? Is he back? Oh, wait, hard. no, he's not. So I, I don't think that Wisconsin's going to be able to do much against this Alabama team. Look, South Florida has had Alabama's number for a bit. Go, Alex Golish is their <laughs> head coach, the former OC from Tennessee. So he's been ready to try to get revenge Panther, for South Florida yeah. in that game. And so going against Luke Fickle, I say this, as long as Luke Fickle doesn't go up against – Bama the same way he did when he was at Cincinnati and tried to run that 3-3-5 defense and force them to run the ball. He They should be able to keep it competitive, but I don't think that Wisconsin's there yet. They still got questions at quarterback. Who's their quarterback? Uh, Van Dyke? We yeah, synced no, what he looked like. We've synced his movies, and since we've seen his movies, we know exactly how they're going to end. I think Bama should be able to cover this spread, no problem. 
Yeah, Wisconsin's yeah. offensive coordinator is Phil Longo, who was famously at Ole Miss with um, A.J. Brown and D.K. Metcalf and those guys. Um, UNC, too, with all of that. Yeah, guys. UNC, yeah. And you have him that has the background of losing like 66-3 to three against Alabama every time they played. I do not have high hopes that he is going to do much better because he's going to basically have a trigger warning when he sees the side of that helmet. Um, but Wisconsin, if they had a little bit more, I just I don't understand why that coach at Wisconsin hired Phil Longo and changed the entire identity of what Wisconsin football yep. was. Hmm. That that makes no sense to me. And because of that, you're dealing with a little bit of a system change. Now, Alabama, they need to run the football. They do not need to drop back and try and turn Jalen Milrow into Tua Tonga Valoa. They, they, they fall into that trap a little bit. If they run the ball with those backs, with that quarterback, they're probably going to win this game two, three touchdowns. The offense has been clunky for back. It's, it, you mm -hmm. thought this was going to be a marriage made in heaven with DeBoer and Nick Sheridan with mm -hmm. Jalen Milrow. And I read a quote this week. They're like, oh, we're still all trying to get on the same page. And it's like, you had all off season. What, what's going on there? And then the running stats are skewed because it's like for three quarters, U.S. have shut down Bama. And then there goes Jam Miller. And there goes Justice Haynes. You look back and they ran for 300 yards. It's like, yeah, but that was not the story of the yeah. game for three Almost quarters. Like the game's last 60 minutes there, Gordy. Um, well, I will say know. there was there were five drives at one point from the second and third quarter, and Bama had a total of negative 23 yards. That offensive line that you have heard me talk about, Gordy, all last year, and this should deep dive after deep dive, worst, pro, worst offensive line in program history, gave up more sacks last season than Washington, Oregon, Georgia, and Michigan combined. Gave up more. They gave up 11 more sacks just last year than Georgia had given up in the last three years combined. They, they had two injuries up there, and Caden Proctor obviously still not 100%. You should still be able to run the football against against South Florida, and, and and I tell you what, the other scary part of it is, the whole recipe for success for South Florida was they just brought they just brought five six people every single time, and Bama could not figure out a way to get Jalen Milrow away from the pressure, and and he, listen, he's going to catch a lot of flack for whatever reason in general, but like they had at one point half of the third quarter on forty three percent of his dropbacks he faced pressure, and that should not happen with an Alabama offensive line regardless of what the combination is. Uh, guys, I want to pivot to uh, one of the other big games this weekend. It is Boston College at Missouri. And, John, um, a weird game. Like, on paper, th these next two games for Mizzou before the season, we just said, ah, easy dubs. But now Boston College and Vandy, you start to look, go, these are actually two decent teams. Bill O'Brien maybe got a little bit too much credit for the win over Florida State week one. It was, it was good, but I think, you know, we'll find Florida State's probably not very good. But still, a, a much more competitive matchup, I think, is what we're expecting here. Yeah, I think that's totally a fair point with Vanderbilt and Boston College. Like you say, I think both of those teams so far have looked like they're fundamentally sound clubs who can run the football, aren't going to beat themselves a whole lot. So that is kind of a, a, a recipe for an upset if Missouri happens to play some sloppy football. Fortunately, the Tigers have been pretty mistake-free for the most part, others than some penalties here and there. But yeah, that's a little bit of, of a worry. To me, I think if you're Boston College, you have to check challenge Brady Cook and the Missouri offense to throw it deep because if you just let Missouri dink and dunk you to death you're not going to win that, that's not a mm -hmm. that's not a recipe for success I think the Tigers will find enough matchups that they like that ultimately they'll win this game but yeah this is going to be a tricky one potentially for the Tigers I still think ultimately they end up with a relatively comfortable victory in the fourth quarter I are you concerned at all about like I know they lost some guys. You had more defensive guys drafted a year ago from Mizzou than they did at Georgia. You got some guys off the edge. Um, I think they lost somebody preseason two for the year off the edge. So it's like with with what Cassianos can bring to the table for Boston College, he he is like their whole offense. Like that, like and and what he can do extending the play. That's the only thing I feel like I would be concerned about for Mizzou because I tell you what, you watch a defense that that gets somebody in third and eight, third and seven or, or longer, and then you see these nine, 10, 11 yard gains after a while. It's like they, they could be back breaking after a while. I think that's the only route for victory for, for Boston College though. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point about the Missouri defense in general. I think that's why it's been a pleasant surprise that the mm -hmm. unit, not just statistically, but I've, I've been to the games, of course, and they've just played really sound fundamental football for the mm -hmm. most part. And yeah. they've brought in just a whole bunch of substitutes and waves, too, especially on that defensive line. And so far, there just hasn't been any noticeable drop off. Of course, against Boston College, you never know what could happen. The one thing with BC, I don't I don't anticipate that they're going to be a hurry up stop 
style of offense or anything like that. You never know what wrinkles they could have specifically for Missouri. Yeah. But I think the Tigers will be able to keep rotating those guys in and their superior depth that with that SEC NIL money, to be brutally honest with you, is probably going to come out in the long run for a win for Missouri. Interesting yeah. thing about Missouri, they've had great running backs the last few years. Nate Noel and Marcus Carroll, like they've run for over 400 yards as a team. It's not, but so far it's running back by committee. It hasn't really been like that one guy to jump out. Noel's got 23 carries. Carroll's got 18. So we'll see if one of them emerges or they just go two-headed monster all year. Yeah, that's the one yeah. thing I was wondering about what was going to go on with Missouri was going to what, what that run game is going to look like, because it feels like with drinking the way that that team is set up, that running back is critical for the success of the yeah. team. But right now, you got preseason and you're figuring out who's going to go ahead and be that um, that main back because it was a Cody Trader last year. Dude yeah. was a beast. Like, dude was a monster. Like He was so good, especially as a walk on. Yeah. Remember walk on, yeah. Jay, from a D2 school. Did you know that? From a D2. Like, it, it's, it's, First it's one who's ever brought that up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, it's like it's in the likes of uh, of Baker Mayfield when he walked on at Oklahoma. It's just fascinating to see that he was able to go in there and say, you know what, I'm taking this job and then actually produce. Not everybody does that. And so the question has been for me is who's going to be that running back that's going to step up for Missouri. That way that offense just starts to hum back like it did last yeah. year. Let's talk one more game this segment, gentlemen. LSU at South Carolina. And this one before the season, I think LSU fans were put in easy dub. And well, everyone was. Not so fast. College game day heading to Columbia, South Carolina. Sandstorm is going to be pumping. Now it is a 12 Eastern game. So, you know, it's not going to be your guest nice game. picker, Juice Wells. What's that? The guest picker, Juice Wells. Uh, yeah, not available. Well, he was going to, Stephen, but he's, he faked an injury to get out of it, so he's not going to be there for it. I, I wouldn't doubt Stephen Garcia maybe on the table to be guest that, celebrity. That has guest been the, like, not the rumor, but a lot of people have been trying to push game to do that. I doubt they will. I think Don Staley might be involved in some capacity. Um, I, just, I just remember he's, I get very excited, Gordon. It's very rarely is, are, the, are the lights shining down um, on Columbia, South Carolina, especially for college game day, first time in over a decade that it's been to Columbia, um, huge, huge game. And I think this is when you talk about all the stuff in the offseason, I kept bringing up like four games for the South Carolina team that everyone just assumed were a loss. And it was LSU, A&M, uh, Mizzou, and then Ole Miss. And, and I understand the perception of the team going into the season, all that kind of stuff. But those are four teams that have played pretty poorly on the road over the last several seasons. LSU is a team that's 8-12 and 12 in road games since 2021. Um, significant drop-off. I think it's 11 points less per game on the road than they have at home. So it's a noon kick. That place is going to be loud. It is going to be rocking. I, those those fans. If there's one thing you will always know about South Carolina is the fans are going to show up. They might they might not always stay for four quarters, but they will they will show up for the first thirty minutes. And I, I think that it's going to be a really really fun atmosphere. Because here's the other thing too, Gordy. People, this is not one of these games. I think for for South Carolina, where people think like, well, if they can have enough crazy things happen, they can win. This is a good matchup for South Carolina. That's a defense that's very, very good, very opportunistic on the back end. And LSU cannot run the football. Yeah, they just LSU cannot run dead, the football. dead last in the SEC in rushing the football so far this year. So, And with that's that and that Gamecock pass rush, I, I'm really tempted to lay the points, take the six and a half, and ride with the Gamecocks. I really am. I, I did it against Kentucky last week. Yeah. Why not? Let's ride the hot now, hand. Now one, other, one other stat, LSU has not given up a sack yet this year. So the pass yeah. – the passing, uh, you know, offensive, offensive line pass, pass blocking has been good. The run blocking has been terrible. So maybe that is, but Nick Emanuari with the pick six a week ago, I mean, maybe maybe this feeds into South Carolina and what they want to do. Is, they lead the SEC in turnovers forced over the, uh, what is it, with, with I believe 70 total since the start of the 2021 season. So since Clayton White has been the defensive coordinator, they have led the entire country, or sorry, the entire conference in turnovers. Mm. All right, real quick, show of hands. Everybody take a bam over Wisconsin. Okay, no upsets there. Uh, Mizzou to beat BC. Okay, we're all to go there. And are we going to go LSU Obviously. still the favorite? Where are we taking LSU as the favorite at South Carolina? Oh, the only one taking LSU. All right. Wow. wow. Now, I, now I'm wondering John, about John my brought pick, this up, laying the, the six and a half. Look, that line was nine and a half when it opened, and it's already down it's three dropping. points. So. Wow, I didn't even know that. Yeah. Well, now I should stay away, but yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. Nine and a half. Yeah. Charm, dude. <laughs> 
All right, more with the squad when we return. Will Kentucky put up a fight against Georgia? Can OU put it all together against Tulane? We'll also talk about Ole Miss traveling to Wake Forest. More here when the squad returns. Back to the squad here in just a second. But first, I want to remind you guys about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you are hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for your role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to a perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn and LinkedIn. They know that small businesses are wearing so many hats and you might not have the time or resources to hire. They're constantly finding ways to make the process easier for you. Go post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. It's LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Go post your job for free terms and conditions apply. One more segment here with the SEC squad. We say goodbye to our buddy Chris Marley. We're welcoming Spencer McLaughlin of Locked On College Football. And, gents, we got four other big games in the conference we got to get to. Let's start with Georgia at Kentucky. A week ago, this seemed like this was going to be the game that was going to host college game day. Everyone in Lexington was going to be fired up to bring Georgia, the number one team, to Lexington. And they go and lay an absolute egg against South Carolina last week. And now... Even my wife, who's a Kentucky fan, even she's turned off from this game. She's like, I have no interest in watching us get our brain speed in. Can t- Kentucky do anything against Georgia to keep this one close? Of course no. they can. They, they, uh, of course they can. College football is not logical, Chris. Mm-hmm. There is no logic to the way Kentucky played Georgia the last time that they played. Of course they can. Now, you may ask the question, Spencer, are you predicting that Kentucky's going to pu- push Georgia? Absolutely, positively not. I would do no such thing. <laughs> I have been on the Georgia hype train as much as anyone can be since the spring. I think they're the number one team in the country and the national title favorites until proven otherwise. Until I see a team. And look, I think Texas was really impressive. I think Michigan is a good team, but not a great team this year. So I want to see how Texas matches up against Georgia. I think it's going to be a really, really fun game uh, when when it rolls around on the schedule. But can Kentucky push them? Sure. It wouldn't shock me per se. Will they? No. And who knows that Georgia defense better than Brock Vandergriff, right? Yeah, flip that around a little bit, too. (laughs) Who knows Brock Vandergriff better than Georgia? And and when you have top 100 players playing on the defensive side of the ball against an offense that is struggling mightily to do anything right now, going against Georgia is not the medicine to get right. So Yeah, this is a how many points is Kentucky going to score game. And because of that, I I just don't think you can put this line high enough. I like to go against the grain, but I can't do it here. It's wild because Mark Stoops, ever since he's been there, at least his teams, when they lose, they still fight hard. Never seen him quit. And for the first time, they quit last week. And so they got a they got a whole season to go. They got to get that that ship righted. Uh, One is kind of interesting. We didn't think that Houston would give Oklahoma much trouble last week. And they did. Tulane just gave Kansas State all they could a week ago. Jay Smith, what do you make of Tulane coming into Oklahoma as the Sooners try to find an offense? Well, Tulane's right now in Shreveport as they're avoiding a hurricane so they don't get stuck in bat in uh, New Orleans because if they don't leave, they, they left now. If they didn't leave now, they're probably going to have to cancel the game because they were there was no way they were going to get out of town. But biggest problem we're seeing in Oklahoma is we've had four centers in the three starts that Jackson Arnold's had, right? The top four wide receivers that were supposed to coddle and make things easier for him haven't played right we've got two of them that's out for the season and two one of them that hasn't played yet and one that's had limited snaps so our biggest issue oh oh yeah we just lost a guard for the uh, rest of the season he just went out with a torn bicep i mean if you name the injury we've probably dealt with it on the offensive side of the ball but knock on wood we ain't seen it on defense yet which is probably where we're gonna have to lean i've been telling my people for like since the seat before since the off season we're gonna have to lean on our defense literally we have to lean on brent venables this entire year because not only with Jackson Arnold being so young, the players that I expected to be there to help him, help him make it through the year, they haven't played yet. But it does look like a few of them are going to show up this weekend. If they do, I expect the offense to actually hum for a change. Anybody want to take Tulane to pull off the upset? 
Well, Tulane's quarterback is very feast or famine, and no, I do not want to take him and pull off the upset. I do, <laughs> I do sure. think at some point they're he's going to get loose with the football like he did against Kansas State because that ended up costing them the football game. He either makes big plays, he gives up big plays, and there seems to be nothing in between. It should be a lot of points, but this could be a little bit of a get-right game for Oklahoma. Yeah, Stephen, you mentioned the Tulane quarterback. Darian Mensa is uh, the name, and I, I think Oklahoma fans should have some healthy respect for what he's capable love kansas state oh, yeah. learned that last week and, and and mensa's mensa's a baller he is a gamer but as you mentioned steven he has to cut down on the turnovers if he does if you tell me that tulane turns the ball over one or zero times i think oklahoma's in a dog fight to the very end two or more turnovers sooners win by 14. he has yeah. a little bit of cam ward to him i like yes. that i like that he, com- he has cam, cam ward, ward but not as good <laughs> yeah he's yes. cam he's cam ward light cam ward diet, was not yeah, quite diet the arm. cam diet cam <laughs> ward Shout out to Tulane. They go from Willie Fritz to John Summerall, and they're still awesome. So, yeah. you know, we'll see. Tell Tell hey, there. Summerall's good. Summerall's good. Anybody's, Summerall anybody look up his coaching record at Troy the last few years? That's yeah. a good football coach. He's let's, the next um, Kentucky head football coach. Let's head out to That's ACC country, Stephen, as Ole Miss will finally face somewhat of a test as they will go on the road at Wake Forest, the team that blew their game against Virginia a week ago. I only know that because my – YouTube TV was giving me four games and it was the fourth one in the corner. <laughs> but uh, what do you make of this one? I mean, at least somewhat of a test for Ole Miss. Uh, honestly, I don't, I'm not expecting much of a test. Ole Miss is a 23 and a half point favorite. And, and I think Ole Miss should probably cover. By the way, if you're looking at betting this game, the over under is at 63 and a half points, according to FanDuel. Wake Forest isn't going to score enough, and Ole Miss isn't going to score enough to get to that 63 number. So I think the under is a pretty safe bet. And with rain in the forecast, that might be a good deal. Jackson Dart has been in complete control. The running game has started to get on track. And the defense, other than some bust in the secondary, that is what we're going to be looking at. Whenever Wake Forest runs that slow mesh RPO that they love, um, they can really – pick on the linebackers and the safeties you got to be careful and very be very disciplined with what you're doing or else they can have a little bit of success i think Ole miss is going to win this game by four or five scores i can never pick a slow mesh team to do anything exciting i can't stand the slow mesh i i understand the ideas behind it it ran david shaw out of town i'll just leave it at that Last one, guys. Uh, I want to get to this is the SEC game of the week. It is Texas A&M at Florida. Well, I mean, what the hell are these two teams? <laughs> We're trying to figure out. Florida got some life in them last week against Sanford. DJ Lagway quarterback, and now Billy Napier saying we're going to go back to Graham Mertz, but we're going to play both guys. A lot of Gator fans yelling, no, let's go with the five-star. Let's just see what he can do. We know what Mertz can do. Let's see what Lagway can do. So going to be interesting. But I'm at A&M. They cannot stop the run. They have been gassed by the run through two weeks. We saw it against Miami, but when McNeese State is doing it against you, you got some problems. So two teams kind of, what are they this year in Florida and A&M? I'm Has not going to lie. Napier even heard of who Wally Pip is? I mean, come on. Graham <laughs> Mertz needs to sit down. Um, Lagway needs to be on the field. Yeah, I'm a little shocked that Texas A&M with Elko has been struggling with the run. I mean, a lot of those dudes on the interior were guys he recruited to Texas yep. A&M. And so seeing that they're not able to stop the run, it's it's baffling, right? Week two is baffling in general, right? We, we saw so many games that just did not make sense for certain teams to win. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out how Notre Dame lost that game. But you start to see a lot of those. And going into week three, I know that uh, Texas A&M and Florida have looked bad. If Florida doesn't play lagway, they're probably going to lose this game. What I'm really interested in, uh, normally in this situation, I would say, hey, oh, the, the home team, four and a half points are, are getting it. Let's just lean Florida. The problem is right now, I'm not sure playing in Gainesville is actually a home field advantage. <laughs> I almost think the Gators would rather play on the road at this point because, again, it, the whole lagway Mert situation, oh, we're going to play them both. I mean, you want to talk about a recipe for hearing the boo birds in the first quarter. There it is. There's the formula. Well, how about Texas A&M has not won a road game in the conference in like a couple of years, a true road game. So it's been a, it's been a while. So Shamar Stewart talked about that this week, uh, Shamar Turner rather. And um, I don't know, it's going to be interesting. You want another awkwardness for this game? You know, Florida does the Mr. Two bits. They're bringing back Emmett Smith to do it. Only problem is his son, EJ Smith, is the third string running back oh, on A&M's no. team. Oh, no. So no. talk about divided. You guys watch Parks and Rec. Parks and Rec yes. fans in, in, in the chat, Tom Haverford's Oh No No 
That's an oh no no. <laughs> Why would you of all the games of all the game? I, I mean, okay. Oh man, that administration. Okay. Or I, I I don't think they're in a very easy. Nobody spot. thought. Nobody thought that out, right? No. no they saw something no. else going I think through their Kevin head. Cruz for the Gators. He wants his son to do well, but he wants the Gators to win, right? <laughs> Good luck yeah, explaining yeah. that one that's, to, to yeah, the wife at home. That's yeah. tough. Yeah, that's tough, man. I real by quick the way, this. before we get out of here, I do want to um, give all the respect to our Vanderbilt overlords and good luck this weekend. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, 2-0. and oh. let's, let's see. Let's see if My they favorite keep... meme of the college football season can't be repeated on here, but it was after week one when Vanderbilt had won and a bunch of other teams had not. And it was Vanderbilt, uh, let's just say their logo, talking smack to Florida and <laughs> yeah. Texas A&M. Yeah. Steven knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Vandy, by the way, a 10.5 point road favorite at Georgia State. So if they can keep that Lay-o. one going. Lay-o. Lay-o. They will hit juggernaut. the season. You, do you know that would be that would be the point. earliest over hit of the college football season? Their win total, I believe, closed at 2.5 on FanDuel. Nope. <laughs> it is. No, wow. that, it absolutely would. Real quick, raise your hands. Are we taking Aggies on the road at Florida? Raise your hands. I think I am. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, it's ill. With so much confidence and enthusiasm. So it, but yeah, I, 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 I just can't find it in myself to take Texas eight and four. I think I think you're right. I think I think there's a chance Lagway. <laughs> Steven, that in. took me a second. Lagway <laughs> that took me a second. But that was good. Lagway looks awesome, and you're right. Wally Pip. He gets Wally Pip. Graham Hurts. Mm. See you later. They ride with Lagway the rest of the way. We will see. And if he leads them to victory, they absolutely will do that. Mm. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for uh, joining us as we do with the SEC squad each and every week. Thanks, hey, man. real quick, we we'll remind you guys follow and subscribe to your favorite uh, Locked On uh, SEC podcast. We'll be covering your favorite teams every day throughout the season. Don't forget, I've got you covering the entire conference each and every day with Locked On SEC, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team each and every day.